very warm welcome to Dr. Nene and Madhuri here today who've joined us and made this evening very special for all of us here at Entrepreneur Awards. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a power-packed evening. We call it the power session, but it's a power-packed evening for a reason. And because, you know, we have got such intelligence sitting right here in this uh, drawing room. And I see so many musical instruments behind you as well. Um, you know, there is Madhuri who's got, who's done 30 years of Indian cinema. She's got 70, uh, 70 movies behind her that she's done in her career. And then uh, there's Dr. Nene who has a, such a, a vivid career in healthcare sector in the U.S. Uh, where he spent 30 years of uh, trying to understand first both as a doctor and now trying to as an entrepreneur to make his best and give his best in the healthcare sector. So thank you very much for joining us here today and uh, for the Entrepreneur Awards and the Entrepreneur Conference. We would love to speak to you about wonderful things that you're doing today. And I mean, I've been reading about what you've been doing. There is a production house, which is RNM that you're managing, which is actually behind your names. And it's so nice to see that. And uh, then you have an edtech venture that you're doing with a dance school with Madhuri, which uh, which I thought was, you know, you thought of it far, way too early because back in 2012 or 2013, nobody was thinking of edtech and particularly performing arts coming in this particular space. So I think that was really early for you to plan it. And then, of course, you have a content platform uh, with RNM, you know, which is agnostic and you're producing for OTT and lots of other platforms. Uh, so, you know, please tell us about this how this collaboration, the business collaboration you brought together between yourselves, you come from such different industries and yet you're here, here as entrepreneurs trying to build this all together. So how, how has it been for you for the last 10 years since you've started working together as entrepreneurs? Well, I think it started with, um, we were just having a conversation one day, we were in Denver and I was saying that, you know, um, I love dancing so much, it's my passion. And is it possible to share this passion with each and every person in each and every family, you know, in the world? And uh, my husband, he's very good with technology. Uh, he is a surgeon. He's a cardi cardiothoracic surgeon, but he's also very good at technology. Um, so he said, yes, why not? And, you know, that's how the conversation started. And uh, it actually developed into this whole idea of uh, Dance with Madhuri, which I think uh, Ram will be able to uh, take you through that because I'm just the creative, you know, person. I can think of ideas, but how do you actually make them happen? You know, that was something I, you know, uh, relied on him uh, to tell me how he made it happen. So I think to add to that, we, when I came to India, my view was that there's lack of access and it is for various reasons that people can't get to uh, their doctors to the best uh, masters for teaching or learning and for other things. So in 2012, we created Arnhem Moving Pictures, which is a platform agnostic digital content company. And the idea was simple, that all screens would converge and become one. And in the process of doing that, the user would decide how they learned, what they learned, what content they took in, and what access they got. Along that journey, I was building out the health-related uh, entities and one day we started looking at it and we said, look, why couldn't we do this for education? And really the kernel, the germ of this wasn't dance. It was to teach in a disseminated fashion using technology, media and brick and mortar come together and go to the last mile. And the challenges back then were that in 2011, when we arrived in India, there were only 150 million internet users and very scarce 2G, 3G in the rural areas. But nevertheless, we decided the, you know, her passion for dance was huge. Let's use it as our proof of concept. And so we loaded it up in three months, we ideated and executed this. And in, uh, this was December of 2012. And by February of 2013, we had launched. Didn't wow. know her popularity because, and, and the launch included the, the uh, IT platform on AWS, the um, front end UI UX, and then the filming done by BBC and, and our teams with her teaching 40 lessons. And that was our first start of Dance with Madhuri. And then we were able to barter all kinds of deals with Viacom, with other people to kind of blow this up. And within you know six or eight months, we then launched the apps because we knew we had traction and all that. And 
what we were finding is people weren't just learning, but they were using that information to get jobs. And so they were closing the loop. So this was like the beginning of Skill India. And our thought was that by building a platform like this, we could give people the opportunity to learn with no boundary. And dance was just the first one. And the remarkable thing about this was that it only 50% of our users were in India. 50% were outside of India, according to our Google Analytics. And a lot of these people were parlaying their knowledge and sharing it. And the goal was to create a global village for culture. Now, what happened was we couldn't handle the volume. And as it scaled, our servers on AWS would always crash. So then we had to up our game and we had to build in redundancy and build an EC2 and, and um, elastic redundancy. We put in separate CDNs and um, we got it up to where you could serve a million people per second and relaunched it in 2015 with a second iteration. And that went viral. And then at the same time, you know, to take it to the masses back then, we didn't have 3G, 4G. And yeah. so we tied up with Tata and launched a dance studio powered by Dance with Madhuri. And in doing that, they already had the ground links to take it to the farthest reaches at the time. And within a month of uh, launching our joint venture channel, um, we had over 100,000 paid users and we became a beta positive and profitable. But more importantly, the price was so small. And that was the other vision, right? We wanted to keep it free forever. We wanted people to be able to learn without any impasse. But what ended up happening is through sponsorship and advertising, we couldn't generate enough revenue. And mm -hmm. so we had to figure out another way to sustain it. And we contemplated taking on money because we had a lot of traction, but the visions weren't aligned. We wanted this to be a true teaching platform. So instead we turned to the DTHs, the direct to home yeah. services, and then at the same time, put a payment gateway in our own thing but at the same time, we charged very little to teach and made it an affordable thing. So in the end, my, my view of this, my humble view of this, and I don't have any formal business education. Um, it's mostly in taking care of people. And the way I looked at it is my patients were my family. I would t treat them the same way as I treat my own family. It's the same way with your customer, that you have to build solutions which add value to their life. And when you do that, they will take them and say, wow, this is great. I don't have any problems you know, with this and I align with you and I pay for this. And in fact, that's what exactly happened. Now it's scaled to where it's on four different DTHs. It goes to 206 countries with our apps and our, our um, uh, online platforms. And now we're scaling it up. And in the lockdown, it's been really amazing because we've given people the opportunity to learn and we kept a bunch of stuff free i mean we wanted to yeah, give we did people like summer camps you know so that people can hop on and learn any kind of dance that they want uh, we had competitions you know keeping people busy uh, so that you know they have something to do during the lockdown and something creative something they love doing and something they can carry forward you know they can teach others they can do whatever they want with the art that they learn and so yeah. uh, we did a lot of free lessons summer camps um, we I think we've entertained people quite a bit. And then the other thing is a feature which we're launching is um, a live feature, which actually gives you one-on-one -on -one teaching. And so we think that'll help because a lot of choreographers in their schools are shut down. And similarly in other educational fields. So we want to give them one platform where they can just sign up. We'll help them market. They'll, they'll put their price, whatever they want, and they'll get most of it, right, with the rev shares Absolutely. and whatnot. But we'll allow them to work. And at the end of the day, this is about rethinking how we do business, right? And pivoting so that we can stay skinny and, you know, attend to as many people as we can because not everyone has uh, the opportunities right now. Sure, totally agree with you. And I think it would be um, given the fact that, you know, in the pandemic, there is uh, nobody can step out. Choreographers can have actually, uh, and dance teachers, they can absolutely use your platform and do so much more. So I think in one sense, you'll probably, you, you may not even have started like that. You'll be an aggregator of uh, dance schools at some point of time, which, which would be very interesting to see. So, you know, my, uh, one of the questions I would love for both of you to answer, particularly Madhuri, let's start with you. You've been on top of the game in the, uh, the film industry, and then you got married, you moved to the US, and then you came back again. How have you seen in all these cycles, the entertainment industry changing? And now that you've got your own venture, 
and you are producing content which is absolutely you know platform agnostic you can you can do it on ott television or wherever it is that you're looking at how how you how have you felt that the entertainment industry has evolved over a period of time Well, I think uh, there's a lot more uh, discipline now in the entertainment business. When I had started, it was not a very sle- streamlined business. It was uh, very skewed, you know, where people were making movies for passion, and uh, you know, once they have an idea, then they very few production houses, which were like you know, like these big corporates that have stepped in now. Very few production houses, like Yashies, B.R. Chopra, or uh, Subhash Gai, Mukhtar. um you know all these were the only ones who were established and that was their business movie making and a lot of other people used to come in make a movie because you know it was their passion but today when i came back it's much more disciplined everything is streamlined um uh, you know uh, uh, right from the scripts to what you're going to wear how you're going to look and you know everything is worked out beforehand so for an artist it's a great um it's a great thing because when once you're on the set you're completely prepared with whatever you know, you're supposed to do you everything is in your head and you're right there but of course there was a spontaneity when we used to work before when i used to walk on the set um sometimes we didn't have our dialogues ready and you know we used to wonder when when will we get our dialogues when, when can we learn it and you know actually perform the scene so all that is uh, taken care of all that is gone there's no uncertainty um everything is planned and uh, i think another thing that i see which is wonderful on the sets is when i used to walk on the sets um in the 90s the only women on the sets were were the hairdressers or the actress and her co-actors were women but today when i walk in you know there are women everywhere in every department yeah, over there absolutely yeah uh, yeah yeah i i even have uh, i just uh, making a film right now um uh, which is nearly complete it's called panchak in marathi and the dop is a woman and i you know i'm so happy to see that that women are everywhere now and i think that's that's just great and like ram said you know it doesn't matter which screen you're watching on whether it's the theater like a huge screen or it's your big tv or uh, you know it's your little ipad or or um, you know or a little phone iphone or any of the smartphones i think people will choose how they want to get the entertainment where they want to go and get the entertainment sure. that's what uh, that's what we even talked about when we started dancing i, I think the bigger issue right now is theaters are closed yeah how you do things are different yeah. filming is done for now mm. you're starting in serials you're doing things so we really have to reengineer what we do and it's slowly coming back but it's going to be up to another year and controversial issue but the bottom line is that in order to do this you know we need to be very smart so that we don't end up yeah. with huge problems and um so i think now more than ever it's going to evolve very very quickly sure and you know i mean given the fact that uh, madhuri just mentioned about how disciplined the industry has become do you think uh, with ott platforms there and your own production house which is rnm uh you're able to do so much more in the industry uh, because of that there is and of course the, the whole platforms in which people consume content has increased i mean while even though there are uh, uh, more i would say formal platforms like ott but people are consuming it of social medias right so how do you think content production and for what the what is the ultimate purpose of the content production going to be going forward so i think one thing is clear the chances that ott takes are vastly different than what traditional studios have in the past. When you looked at tent poles, when you looked at standard things, you had to have a certain formulaic mm-hmm. way to handle your things. You always had to have the hero, you always had the heroin, you had to have them doing this that and the other. Well, you know what? The stories I'm seeing coming out from not just India, not just the US, but everywhere on the planet are amazing. At the end of the day, as filmmakers, we're storytellers. and india abounds we've got 1.3 billion people imagine the comedy the tragedy the the sheer uh drama that you see in everyday life here so i i think india has a lot to offer and and to answer your question i i think you know ott and and um you know all of the other players have have democratized 
how things happen. And, you know, their motives are not always the same. You don't have to worry about your box office uh, returns to make an amazing film. So it leaves the director and the filmmaker and the producer with a little more uh, freedom to develop subjects, to really focus on the creatives and to build it out. And I, I think, wouldn't you agree that the type of things which are coming out yeah. now are, are amazing? It's amazing, yeah. The stories that we are seeing now unfold. Um, and like Ram said, you, know, you don't have to make a particular kind of a movie. You can tell your own stories the way you want to tell them. And sure. that's what's lovely about, you know, the OTD platform. Yeah, and we, uh, we've already seen some spectacular content. And I think post-pandemic, there'll be even much better content uh, coming through. You also, I understand, have a health tech venture, you know, where you're planning to give advice to patients as to how they recuperate and how they sort of uh, feel better. So please tell us a little more about it. Yeah, so so thanks for asking. I. You know, for, for uh, 20 years of my life, um, I practiced as a heart surgeon and we would, you know, fill the gap. We would take care of people when they were the sickest and, um, you know, try to bring them back from the abyss. And fortunately, with, with the techniques we used and science the way it is in medicine, in most cases, they would do great. But I couldn't turn back the clock. No matter how hard I work, I couldn't undo what they'd done their whole lives. Yeah. The second thing is, I, I think as a, a, a thing, what we're envisioning is, what is it that every person needs from healthcare, right? It's when you don't have it and a catastrophe happens, no matter what else you have in your life, you're in jeopardy. So what we have cooked up is something which is personalized precision healthcare, which really focuses on individuals and tries to create a entity which protects them from cradle to grave and is aligned with their well-being forever and their families and all that. And so it looks at their different variables, including their lifestyle and what they have to go through because no two people are alike. And mm -hmm. the disease can be similar. How you, you know, manipulate, manipulate the variables is very different. I mean, your life is going to be very different than mine, than hers. And so we're actually looking at that sort of thing. And it's a combination of media, technology, and brick and mortar, which serves to educate the patient and take care of them, give them the building blocks of um, cloud-based EMR, which is smart, and then a smart services marketplace. And so you know, in the end, with all the IoT devices, all the other things it'll have, it's going to be a feedback loop which continuously monitors you. It's almost like in a car when you have a check engine light. That's what you'll end up having, not a check engine, but you'll have something which <laughs> links and fills the gap between the patient and the medical community. Because, I mean, let's face it, in India alone, there's 1.8 million docs, 1.33 billion people, and not enough, you know, medical expertise to go around and that includes the allopathic and Ayush dogs, right? Okay. And the only way we can do it is to build something more than that. And the pandemic has taught us that more than ever, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I would say edutech and health tech are the two big things. We've been working on them for years, but now all of a sudden they've blossomed. And well, they should, right? I think we need them badly. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Um, so, you know, um, we'd love to know about what you've been doing uh, during this lockdown. I mean, it's uh, it's been challenging times. Most of us, the work probably, while we've all had massive workloads um, when the pre, in the pre-pandemic times, but I think we've all kept busy in some ways. And I also see that Madhuri has just launched her uh, first song. You know, we've seen her as a dancer, as an actor, but it's the first time we've seen you as a singer. So, you know, how did you collaborate to get the song out? I understand it's an at-home venture that you did in terms of, you know, you shot it at home. So how did it happen? We had recorded the song in LA and the purpose of the song was, I love to sing. And, um, you know, we thought um, there's someone who heard my voice and they said, why don't you sing? Uh, because you have a great voice. You should you should try singing. And so we got into the studio with uh, Raja Kumari and Narendra Kumar and Narendra Singh and uh, and Ram and me and we all got together and we said, OK, what do we want to sing about? And I thought, you know, that one thing which is common to everybody 
and in everybody's life is struggles. And when you are faced with struggles, how do you overcome it? Um, sometimes you feel so down and so uncertain about the future that, um, you know, you have to really look into yourself and gather the strength and light a candle, you know, of sorts, which can be placed in a hurricane or uh, a storm and you're still going to be burn, burning bright because we are public figures and we have to be like the beacon of light for everyone, whatever may be happening in our lives. And so that was the idea behind the song. And that's when we wrote the song and I sang it. And now during lockdown, when I looked around and I, I saw, you know, that everybody is going to the same kind of emotions right now, because, you know, this, this is like an unprecedented time you're going through. There's so much uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen. And everybody was, you know, there's a big question mark uh, everywhere. And I thought that maybe we should release the song during this time to give a, yeah. I could call it the candle of hope, like a, some positivity in their lives that, you know, it's okay. You have to burn bright and uh, you have to help not only yourself, but also others. And we dedicated this song to the doctors and nurses and the frontline workers, like the sanitation workers, because they are the candles burning the brightest right now, despite all odds. They are out there working for us. Um, they are, um, you know, taking the risk. They're risking their own families. Sometimes they're away from their families and they're working for us. So I thought we should dedicate this. But the biggest issue was how do we shoot it? Because we cannot go out. We cannot do anything. And so, like he said, uh, you know, YouTube was our uh, school. We went to the <laughs> of YouTube and we found out how to light up. And Ram, you know, kind of, um, we, uh, we had just gifted him with a... Uh, with a great camera for me, he loved photography. So uh, we had bought a great camera for his birthday and uh, a very professional. So we thought, come on now, let's be, and there were some lights in the house as well. So we kind of lit up everything. We learned how to do that. And then, because I have been in this field for so long, I knew what kind of, you know, cuts we'll need or what um, kind of shots we'll need for the song. And so we just, made it very simple, just kept like a mic and I'm singing into the mic and, you know, we shot the song and of course we got footage for uh, the doctors and nurses and how they're struggling right now. Uh, so we all put all that together and because I have r and uh, you know, we make so much content that our um, our editors kind of put it all together and finally released it. So it was it was a lot of work, but it was so much fun to learn all that. Sure. How was it for you, Dr. Dini? Uh, <laughs> he was I, a cameraman. I mean, he was. <laughs> said, uh, you know, lockdown has made us self-reliant, and um, this is another example of that. I have always loved toys, tech, technology, and playing, and I've got a whole toolbox of different things. And so, <laughs> you know, we had iPhones up, and we had this up, and that up, and you had to adjust the lighting, and it was a challenge, right? And I love challenges, and so. I, the other advantage I had was I could talk to some of her buddies from the industry and they could coach me a little bit, but doing it remotely versus doing it in person is tough. But, you know, the, the real vision was this, look, we've got a lot of people suffering and we have a set of people, the government workers, the police, the sanitation workers, the doctors, the nurses, all these guys on the front line. We're like, look, we want to be behind them 110% and say, look, we need to all band together and we need to support each other right now. And so it was a labor of love. And the whole project was, to be honest, I mean, when we started this in LA, there was a lot to be sung about and a lot to develop. And it was really the backstories of what she'd done through her career. And so that, that was fun, but then filming it now and putting it out and then getting it out. And I don't know if you saw it, but it went out to about 1.2 billion yeah, people. Yeah, blew my mind mm -hmm. another digital kind of <laughs> crazy and so you know the message is clear that for all people who are trying to do something and make a difference whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're a social entrepreneur or whether you're anyone else digital is powerful right okay. and this lockdown will have some silver linings and we will learn together about them and if for no other reason i mean you have to you know when life gives you lemonades make uh, when life gives you lemons make lemonade and this is like the classic example that figure it out and see if you can make it better for everyone else around you. 
absolutely totally agree with you so we've got some questions coming one question we've got is that you know since you uh, since you've got your own edtech and health tech ventures and you sort of very passionate about technology are you looking to sort of invest in other startups also which are technology oriented yeah so so absolutely i've been investing for many years and i run our family office and we have seeded a number of health tech and and uh, ed tech and other ventures. Look, I look for amazing people who are, you know, doing things and then try to support them. And, you know, the, the, the financial part of it is a small part of it. The bigger part is to bring together talented pools of people and create universes. Because what I see is that, you know, we need to look beyond ourselves and we need to look into worlds which haven't even been invented yet. And we need to see if we can inspire India in a different way. Right. And, and also give people opportunity. This whole ed tech was so that I could go out into the farthest reaches of the 70 percent rural India and find the next Madhuri Dixit, the next Biju Maharaji and nurture them and bring them to the forefront. And similarly, you know, we built it for dance. We're now going into other areas. And so the idea is where we may teach acting, you know, uh, filmmaking, uh, cricket, this, that and the other. The platform can handle it. And so the, the beauty is absolutely I'm interested in that. If there are people who are doing crazy stuff, I'd love to hear about it and I'd love to help you. Well, Dr. Nene, I have been a 90s kid and I can tell you there is only one Madhuri Dixit. So you cannot find another one of her. <laughs> uh, so, you know, somebody is also asking that, you know, um, how what what is it that you do uh, when you're not working how do you sort of uh, what is the quality time that you spend you know i mean particularly in this lockdown we've all been learning so many things who madhuri ji did you cut her, cut his hair also yes i did i and what is the very good job of it did you cut hers you know i i mean her rationale i think was sai she said that Look, my hair can grow out, but yours can't. I think what you're trying to say is, I don't trust you with my hair. Yeah, and that's reasonable. I would have gone to YouTube and saw how to do it and, you know, tried to make it symmetric. And, you know, I'm a surgeon, so you measure twice, cut once, and make it all work. So. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of thing we got to do. And another thing I think uh, this lockdown has given us is time to spend with our families. Yeah. Because everybody's so busy and everybody used to complain. We don't get enough time with the families. Dinner was the only time where the whole family used to come together because everybody's working. The kids are busy. You're busy. But this time, I think we got a lot of time with the family. So I try to spend as much time as possible, though both of them are teenagers and boys. Uh, so as much time as I could, uh, you know, with them and... Uh, read a book finally, which I was not getting to do. Um, then, uh, you know, cooking and uh, like the song that we shot and, you know, doing so many different things. Um, that has been amazing. I, I think in the end, you realize how lucky all of us are. And the idea is, I look at the bright side, there's going to be a lot of neat things coming out of the post-COVID era no traffic, no pollution, working with Zoom, spending more time with your kids and, and your family. And um, her mom, I mean, she's a gem. She's 88 years old and yeah. she's got a wit, which I mean, <laughs> she's the one who made Madhuri who she is. But the bottom line is it's been, and, and even our people, a few of them supported us through this, right? And they stayed with us yes. and we are eternally gr grateful and, and, you know, my whole team, 20 people, 16 are sheltering at home, four have stayed with me, and I've supported all of them. And the amazing part about it is we have these, you know, Friday night kind of get togethers on Zoom, just <laughs> to talk about stuff. Yeah. And we'll play guitars and sing. And even inside, we'll make music. I have a full studio here now, and and do stuff together. And, and so, look, you have to not worry about what you can't change. You have to cherish what you do have and enjoy life because you don't know, you know what I mean? And then change other people's lives. Yes. Who need, yes. Know, the, and we worked hard on that one. Yeah. And I think, you know, I talk to many uh, couples, but I think you're such a perfect couple. You know, you complement each other in so many ways. And, you know, just this talk, I mean, you know, I've always seen the couple, one one person is able to cut each other and not even once in this entire talk, 
did we see that you know there was any overlap so i think you truly the power couple uh, and you're blessed to be with each other and together what you'll do is going to bless the world so much more um just because of the kind of work that you do and some wonderful chemistry that you have both as a as a husband and a wife and as well as uh, entrepreneurs we've got you on the digital cover of entrepreneur 2020 in for august 2020 we'd love to uh, showcase the cover to you which i'm sure you want to see for the first time so can we please have the cover um, on screen it that's not him though Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What a gorgeous looking couple for the power. It's truly a power partnership what you've brought together and I think whether it's business, movies, health, uh or the fact, you know, as a family, uh you've done some brilliant stuff. Um also, you know, because uh I think very rarely do I find couples which are so much in sync uh in terms of the kind of work that they do and then how they're able to plan the family together. We would also like to present to you a great honor which is the couplepreneur of the year award from entrepreneur. Can Thank we have you on the screen please? Wow. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think it's well deserved indeed. <laughs> you're doing some brilliant brilliant work together please keep it up i'm going to give to kavya to announce the other awards uh, as we um, see some other young entrepreneurs being awarded today thank you so much ritu and thank you so much indeed for joining us as well uh, madhuri ji and dr neeni thank you so much for sharing your valuable words many of the people who are sort of putting their thoughts on the discuss box along with me we have all been ardent followers of yours even on social media we managed to see what you shared but now we got to hear how you were actually conceptualizing all that you shared so thank you so much for that while we have your presence here i'll be virtually i'll start also reading out some very interesting categories some very important categories and we shall go ahead to also award them with the awards so first up we're talking about the best social impact startup of the year so ladies and gentlemen this award goes to oiler motors so let's all come together and probably give a round of applause from our own comfort of home oiler motors it is in fact their mission is to accelerate india's transition to sustainable energy I do believe that we also have with us uh, Mr. Saurav Kumar who's the founder and CEO of Oiler Motors. If I can quickly request him to join us, there he is. Well, Saurav, firstly congratulations. Thank you. Uh thank you Madhuram and the Entrepreneur India team for giving us this award. It really means a lot to us and uh, from where I see I think we have made some great early strides in the area of electric mobility. we definitely want to be in champion in this space thank you so much this means a lot to my team and their uh, families my parents and teachers investors and clients who have believed in our vision over the last two years and uh, in this uh, vision of sustainable india thank you so much for the award congratulations, congratulations. very well done thank you great job Congratulations Sora and the team in fact Euler Motors the name it's a they get the name from the mathematician uh, Leonard Euler so that's Leonard well deserved Euler. that's that thank you thank you so much for joining us congrats again with that let's take that inspiration forward and let's move on to the next category and this is the young entrepreneur of the year so ladies and gentlemen young entrepreneur of the year and the award goes to Mr Arjun Deshpande who's the founder and CEO of Generic Aadhar So there we go congratulations to Arjun I think uh, Arjun will also be joining us in a minute in fact uh, while he's joining let me inform you all 18 years teenager who's a founder and CEO of Generic Aadhar he's created a new era in pharma industry I think that's amazing there we go Hello yeah thank you I always believe in blessings and special thank you to honorable Mr Ratan Tata sir for supporting my venture yeah. to senior citizens of most admirable and favorite madhuri dikshit ji and dr nene ji uh, i extend my thanks to, uh, special thanks to you both of you to giving me uh, young entrepreneur of the year award 2020 uh, thank you uh, entrepreneur global media ritu maria ji jandikada is the first company to empower single medical store owners and we are providing affordable and quality medicines across india to every one of you i am not only creating jobs i am also creating entrepreneurs 
it's time we stand up for our India and become atmanirbhar. Don't do job. We become job creators in this new era of pharma industry with Jantik Adar. Wonderful. So, yes. Congratulations. 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 Well needed. Love to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Antarana, as well. for giving me such a great honor and mother dikshit ji as well so really she is also inspiration for our young youth yeah thank you thank you congratulations to neera arjun and the entire team i mean it's amazing how the baton is being taken forward by the young generation over here with that let's quickly move on to our next category and here we're talking about the woman entrepreneur of the year we all know that a woman on a mission needs no permission so we're going to talk about women entrepreneur of the year and the winner is mrs vinita jain the founder chairman of biotech Beautiful indeed. I believe we do have a video, but I'm going to quickly check with the team if you're playing the video, or shall we just move on to the next category? Of course, Vinita is a name synonymous when we talk about the pioneering biotech, the way the industry has shaped. Um, in fact, biotech's mission is to satisfy diverse beauty needs of the customers, and they are a name synonymous with oak across all the generations. So, congratulations to the entire team. Let's then move on to our next category quickly, and we're talking about our final category in this set. We're talking about Intrapreneur of the Year. The Intrapreneur of the Year is Mr. Oliver Mirza, the Managing Director and CEO, Dr. Odka India Private Limited. <laughs> Huge congratulations indeed. As we all know that Dr. Ojkar India acquired Fun Foods, which is a leading purveyor of Western cuisine in India. So it's only befitting that Mr. Oliver is the winner of Intrapreneur of the Year.